As part of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change signed back in 2016, all 194 signatories were supposed to have lodged updated climate plans for the period beyond 2030, at least nine months in advance of the next big climate talk fest in Glasgow in November. So far, just three countries, three countries have done so. Norway, Suriname in South America and the Marshall Islands, located in the Pacific Ocean to our north. Now, between them, these three countries represent just 0.1% of global emissions. And one of them, Suriname, with a population of just half a million people, is demanding over a billion dollars in climate aid over the next decade. It's true to say that some 70 countries have pledged publicly to be carbon neutral by 2050, but it's far from clear exactly what that means. For instance, New Zealand, one of the main climate virtue signalers, well, they say they'll be carbon neutral, but only by excluding agriculture, which is its main source of emissions. Britain, another virtue signaler, I'm sorry to say, even under Boris Johnson, says it will be carbon neutral too, but that's because it can fall back on nuclear power from France and has largely exported its manufacturing industry. Although Australia is routinely slammed by climate lobby groups for supposedly not doing enough, we are actually one of only very few countries that has reliably met our emissions reduction targets. Since 2005, our emissions, Australia's emissions, are down by 13%. In that time, Canada, no one criticises Canada anymore, do they, now that it's led by the ultra-woke yet blackface-wearing Justin Trudeau? Well, Canada has only cut its emissions by 2%. And New Zealand, also beyond criticism because of Jacinda Ardern, well, they've actually increased emissions by 20% since 1990. Then, of course, there's China. There are no Extinction Rebellion protesters on the streets of Beijing, but there should be if everyone's emissions are judged by the same standard because China's emissions have gone up, up by at least 54 per cent since 2005. These one-sided climate protests that target Australia and Trump's America, which has also reduced emissions by 13 per cent since 2005, largely of course because of the fracking revolution, show that the climate cult is less about reducing emissions than affirming belief. To the climate zealots, meeting emissions reduction targets, as Australia is doing, is not nearly as important as proclaiming that climate change is the world's gravest problem and promising that nothing, not established jobs, not future prosperity, not any consideration of national interest, nothing should get in the way of making promises regardless of whether they actually get delivered. Right now, some self-described modern liberals, such as Trent Zimmerman and Dave Sharma, are urging the government to adopt a net zero emissions target by 2050. Naturally, of course, they're being egged on by Malcolm Turnbull, who yesterday said that building a new coal-fired power station was nuts, and a very clear message to his mates in the party room to make life difficult for the Prime Minister. People who are advocating that the government should fund coal-fired power are basically making a case for higher emissions and higher energy prices, and that is nuts. Hmm, well, that's not what he said when he was in Parliament. But don't take it from me, here's the man himself. Well, well like, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I said. I said those people who say that there is no future for uh, fossil fuels are delusional. Coal is one of our biggest exports. It creates and, and uh, supports thousands and thousands of jobs across Australia. The reality is that coal is and will be for a long time a very big part of the world's energy solution. Australia is the world's largest exporter of coal. We've invested $590 million since 2009 in clean coal technology research and demonstration, and yet we do not have one modern high efficiency, low emissions coal-fired power station, let alone one with carbon capture and storage. So here's the current picture. Old, high emissions coal-fired power stations are closing down. 
as they age, reducing base load capacity. They cannot simply be re replaced by gas because it's too expensive or by wind or solar because they're intermittent. Storage has a very big role to play, that's true. But we will need more synchronous base load power and as the world's largest coal exporter, we have a vested interest in showing that we can provide both lower emissions and reliable base load power with state-of-the-art clean coal-fired technology. Well, thank God for technology because there's nothing like the horse's mouth, is there? And while Scott Morrison has promised to look into zero net emissions, he's done so with a vital caveat that his government will not adopt any target that might put jobs and industries at risk. Of course, we should try to reduce emissions, provided, and this is crucial, it doesn't drive manufacturing jobs offshore, it doesn't increase taxes or impose heavy costs on people's standard of living or our way of life. And as it stands, we're doing that. Unlike most other countries, Australia is on track to meet and beat our 2030 emissions reduction targets. But remember what I said about Canada, New Zealand and the UK? We should not take lectures from those who say one thing and do another. And we shouldn't allow the climate zealots to misrepresent the facts because compromising our economic fundamentals to strike a pose overseas is a betrayal of our country's future security and as we've seen by the latest revelations today, most of these countries don't pull their weight anyway.